WROI at 1033 on this Wednesday morning. We are going to go across the console and welcome Woodlawn Hospital CEO John Alley. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You? Pleasure well, to be here. You get here all right? It's getting a little we, slicker. Can, you know, practices my drifting skills oh, coming in. You you know, just there a little slick out there this morning. Look like Rudy Caracciola coming yeah, in some of yeah. the corners. So uh, we had a board meeting on Woodlawn, if I understand. Yeah, board correctly. meeting was yesterday. So uh, how are things going? Doing pretty good. We uh, kind of were looking back at our December financials, but we other things kind of come up during the board meeting. Uh, one of the things that I uh, wanted the board to get updated on, I'm sure everybody's been following the news of all the ransomware attacks of other health care facilities around the country and in Indiana. And unfortunately, about a year or so ago, you know, we suffered that same problem. So I just want to make sure that uh, the board felt comfortable with the measures we put in place. So I had Director of IS, Travis Albright, come up, did about 10, 15-minute presentation, brought the board up to speed of all the protections we put in place. The problem is, as we put protections in, these people are trying to hack into them, are always seemed at one step ahead of you. So we can never guarantee that it's not going to happen. Uh, very confident what we've put in place now is the best we can be today. Uh, and we just have to constantly, every day, monitor where we're at, what's going on with those attacks. And uh, got an outside firm that is actually monitoring for us every attack attempt on our hospital. So we get reports. You had six yesterday, you had five today. You know, it's uh, it's real time. They let us know what's happening. So we can be more proactive and try reactive to it, a little more proactive. So it's uh, unfortunate that we have to take those measures. It's a very expensive part of health care anymore. And uh, but it's just way, the way of the world. Everybody's trying to find that easy buck, and uh, they know healthcare is a very vulnerable institution that we can't go without our computer systems for very long. And uh, once they lock them down, we have to do whatever we can to get them up as quick as we can. So uh, you know, you pay the ransom and get your stuff back and move on, and then hopefully put stuff in place to prevent it. So and for people who don't know, ransomware is just what it sounds like. They invade your computer, they tell you, and they say, "Give us money, and we won't wipe your hard drives." Yeah, whatever. basically, they lock up all your files. Uh, they get in and and have a a tool that can encrypt all your files. Only they have the key right. to, uh, to decrypt then those files. And uh, so, you know, you pay them the money, they send you the decryption key, you run that on your system, and all your files come back. Um, you know, fortunately, nobody has had that instant where they paid the, the ransom and they did not get the key. Because these people, this is their bread and butter. They, yeah. about the first time they don't give you the key, then everybody's going to stop paying. So, uh, unfortunately, a couple hospitals in Indiana have suffered last week that. One of the, the national companies called Allscripts, which provides the software for thousands and thousands of physician offices across the country, was attacked. Two of their main hubs, uh, servers were attacked, and they were down for about six days. Got notification yesterday that all their systems are now back up and operational. And they're, they're pretty slick at it. They not only attack your live files, they also have a way to get into your backup files. So you say, I'm just going to bring my backup in. It's corrupted, too. So you got to be very careful. Make sure you have a very robust backup system, multi-layers deep, and firewall after firewall. So it's like somebody breaking into a house. If you've got four locked doors, they're going to go to the neighbor who has one locked door. Right. So, you know, we've put up, you know, numerous doors in an attempt to keep people out and, uh, you know, constantly monitor it. So uh, the board is pleased that, uh, you know, we've taken the steps to get where we're at to make sure that uh, we're mitigating that attack vulnerability that we, we did have in the past. Excellent. One of the other items that we looked at, the board approved a, a purchase of a new cardiac stress treadmill system. Current system is a little over 10 years old, and what we're seeing is that numerous issues with it, uh, either the software not functioning or the machine itself not working, and we had patients scheduled, we have to reschedule them, so we just went ahead and said it, it's probably time to go ahead and replace that machine and bring in a new one, so uh, they did approve the purchase of that yesterday, so hopefully within the next 30 days we'll have a, a new machine in, much more reliable, and, and be able to continue to serve the patients uh, in our service area on that. Um, the other thing, uh, my infection control nurse wanted me to just kind of talk about the flu. Uh, I have a thing here. I was going to ask you if we're still uh, restricting visitation. We're still restricting, yeah. It, uh, you know, what we're looking at right now is just some of the advice that we'd like to get. And this is coming from you know, the CDC is that everyone over six months, 
or older should get a flu shot this season, and it's not too late. If you haven't got a flu shot, you can still get it. Uh, we are seeing the peak numbers of flu cases this season. It's uh, When we're looking where we were at this time last year, we had maybe 20 to 30 cases. You know, we're up over 150 this year. Uh, unfortunately, the, the flu vaccine is a best guess. When they put it together, they guess which variant of the flu virus is going to be out there, and they missed it. They're, right this year, they said CDC is about 10% effective. But even though they missed it, if you get the flu shot and then still get the flu, it does reduce the severity of that illness. And, uh, you know, check with your local health care provider, your doctor's office. If you haven't had the flu shots, it, again, it's not too late to do that. Uh, the flu is much more uh, serious than the common cold. It can uh, lead to hospitalization, and there's been quite a few deaths across the country from the flu. And to kind of clarify, a lot of people think when they have, you know, the diarrhea and vomiting, that's the flu. That's the, the good old stomach virus. When we're talking, you know, the real flu, it's the upper respiratory, the cough, achiness, uh, high fever. Uh, it can turn into pneumonia very quickly. I was going to say, so, that's the one that gives you danger of pneumonia. Yeah. And there's really no cure for it. There is a, a drug out there, a medicine called Tamiflu. And all that does is kind of treat some of the symptoms, makes you feel a little better. But there's no cure for the flu at this time. Um, you know, the vaccine's not perfect. And, and we kind of talked about that. Really get it, even though it's not a perfect one. But it does help mitigate that if you do catch the flu. And the, you know, the best thing you can do is just remember to practice cough etiquette. If you have a cough, cover your mouth. Either use an elbow or a tissue. And then the best advice we can give is wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands constantly. Because it's, the flu is a, kind of an airborne. Uh, you know, people yeah. sneeze, they cough, the they aer aerosol you know, gets a mist. So if somebody coughs into the hand and they shake your hand and you scratch your nose, guess what? Now all of a sudden you've exposed yourself to that. So uh, I think I've gone through about five containers of hand sanitizer in the past week. Yeah, I just constantly are, are using that. Clean your hands. Um, I remember several years ago when we were on our honeymoon in Canada, I was struck by almost every place you went into, no matter what the business was. They had right there next to the door. They had the big hand sanitizer. Hands use them. It looked kind of like the ticket thing at the license yes. branch. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. And of course, when they have national health care, they have an incentive to try to keep costs down. So they were encouraging all kinds of people to do that. It was everywhere you walked in, first thing you did. Yeah, even even if it's not flu season, it's just a good idea. Oh, yeah. Just keep your hands clean. Um, and if you are sick, stay home. You know, one of the best things you can do is if you're not having you know real serious complications, stay in bed, drink plenty of liquids, take some Tylenol or whatever to help control your fever. But uh, you know, the less you're out, the less people get exposed to to that flu. If you do need to get out, you know, be sure to keep your mouth and nose covered. You know, uh, the hospital, we've got masks at all the entrance now, so if you do come in and you think you might have the flu, we're just asking, go ahead and please put a mask on. That helps our staff not be exposed to it, so we've got people to treat them when they do come in. Uh, so, yeah, be sure, if you haven't got your flu shot, get it. Uh, just wash, wash your hands. That's the best thing we can do mm -hmm. right now. We're thinking right now we're probably getting on the downside of it. Uh, last week and this week was supposedly from the CDC was going to be the peak season for the flu. Uh, it should start going away a little bit now. It was interesting. I saw an article this morning uh, when I was you know, looking for you know, some flu facts. Estimated cost to U.S. businesses right now from uh, missed work, $9.8 billion dollars is what the flu is costing because the workers just aren't there. And that's this season that's so far. That's this season right. so far. You know, so that's a fairly large number. So uh, oh, yeah. just be aware of it <laughs> and, uh, you know, try, try to avoid sick people, but absolutely wash your hands a lot. Wash your hands, yep. yep. One of the other things that we got notification of is we got our accreditation from HFAP, which is good for three years. And, you know, that's a fairly big deal to us. Uh, a team of surveyors come in and spend three to five days at the hospital and they absolutely look at everything. They look at every policy we have. And if we say we do ABC, then we have to prove to them that we do it. Uh, they interview patients, uh, go through all of our safety uh, mechanisms we have in place. An architect actually goes and climbs through the ceilings because they're looking to see what type of caulking we have in fireproof walls to make sure that that caulking is the right caulking for any penetration. So it's a, you know, a lot of time, a lot of effort put in to make sure we pass that. We had a, a few things where they had changed some codes on us from the last time there. Uh, one of the biggest ones, we had a couple doors that are now needed to be fire rated that weren't before. Uh, so they get what's called a citation, which means basically you've got 
X number of days to correct this this deficiency. So we've got uh, those doors will hopefully be installed by the end of this week. It took a while to get the doors in. Uh, there were some areas that never needed smoke detectors in the past. They do this year. So we've uh, you know put in a bunch of smoke detectors. Uh, surgical floor had a crease in it. wasn't a hole. The infection control person says, you know, I'm not happy with that. So you got to put new floors in. We could have argued that one, but, you know, at some point, you know, could that floor develop a crack in it? Yes. So we put new floors in. So, you know, they're they're very picky. Uh, they check absolutely everything. Uh, we had one, found one dust bunny on a uh, sprinkler head. So we got a citation for that. So, I mean, it's, it's serious stuff. Was it fixed? Yeah, you take a dust rag and cleaned it off but he said i saw it so you know they have to you know, give a citation for that so i'm glad they do it it's you know i'm aggravated when they're there because i feel like it's, it's very nitpicky um but when you think the long term what they're trying to do is ensure that that building meets the utmost safety standards for people coming in not only from the facility itself but the care that we render so you know it, it's uh frustrating it's it's stressful while they're there after they're gone you look back and say you know they're doing their job, and we're glad they did it. So uh, we should have all those uh, fixed by the end of this month, and uh, we're good for another three years. They'll come back in and do it again. Uh, is, we start over every three years. Uh, there's nothing to say, well, you, we looked at that before. We won't look at it again. They absolutely look at everything again. Who um, all do they accredit you with? Is this... It's basically with the uh, uh, CMS, which is the Medicare. No, I was going to say, did Medicare look at that? Yeah, they Medicaid, look at Medicaid, or do they yeah, have a different they, thing? Every insurance company wants us to be accredited, and okay. what that means is that we 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 have the highest standards of quality and safety. And if you're not accredited, then sometimes uh, insurers are going to say, "Well, then we're not going to pay you, or we're going to pay you a lower rate." So it's very important that hospitals get accredited. And uh, you know, CMS it's required. You can either have an outside agency, which we choose to do, or CMS can come in and do it. They prefer you have somebody else because they don't have the manpower but it uh you know not only do we get looked at by them state board of health can come in at any time do the same thing over again uh so you know you just we're constantly being reviewed by outside agencies to ensure that we do have a safe environment you know for the patients and visitors so it's kind of nice uh, it's frustrating when they're here you know you, you kind of look at it and say you got really you're kidding me you know that was good two years ago and then they say well yeah but this regulation changed, and they don't grandfather it in. So if there's a change in regulations, we have to update our building to the new standards. And sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do when you got a building that's 30 years old. Figure out how to do it, get it done, and, and they say thank you and give us our accreditation. So it was nice to get that done, out of the way, and, and uh, we'll start probably next week preparing for the next one three years from now just to make sure that everything's in place. Excellent. One of the other things that, you know, five years ago, had anybody told me I would be talking about this in healthcare, I would have laughed at him. But, uh, you know, we need to get some educational sessions for our employees because we're seeing a, a dramatic increase in the amount of illegal drugs coming into our building being used by patients and visitors. And, you know, my concern is that puts our staff at a risk. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've had, you know, uh, it been in the newspaper, numerous arrests in, in one of our departments for, for well, pick a drug, they found it there. Um, you know, the latest one was uh, some heroin. Uh, you know, so it's being used by the patients in our facility. Staff aren't used to that. Um, you know, so we're trying to find, we're going to do some educational sessions. First of all, let identify, here's what this stuff looks like. Um, most of my staff says, I wouldn't know it if I saw it, you know, right. in front of me. Because that's not their world. So we're going to bring some folks in and do that. How has it changed people's behavior? Uh, because, you know, if all of a sudden, you know, they have a behavioral change, we're thinking, is it a treatment that we're doing when it might be an outside source that we don't know anything about? So it's, it's going to take some time to get everybody educated on that. And it's unfortunate that, you know, as a healthcare facility, we have to do this. But it's for the, you know, protection of the staff and the other patients. Uh, you know, the, a lot of these things are using open flames, you know, in our building. That's an oxygen-enriched environment. That's, and yeah. They're just not thinking that the catastrophic effect that could have, you know, just one little spark, one flame, if they're in an oxygen-enriched area. So um, we got to become more diligent, uh, more watchful of what's going on. But I can't hold a staff person responsible for something. They have no idea what they're looking for. So we're going to start that, hopefully, you know, get them a little more comfortable with, Here's the behavior to look for, or here's the paraphernalia that 
you know, we've been finding that, you know, I'm say, well, I saw that, I didn't know what it was. So, you know, we're hoping to uh, kind of give my guests uh, drugs 101, for lack of a better term. Yeah. And uh, it's unfortunate in healthcare, and, and it's not unique to us. Um, when I talk to, you know, my counterparts at other facilities, they are seeing the same thing. Um, you know, it's probably a little later coming out to the rural hospitals. The big cities have been dealing with this for years, but, you know, it's in our community now. It's, it's just not in our hospital. It's all throughout the community. And so as an organization, you know, we've got to do something to help educate folks. And what can we do to help prevent them, people from getting into that area? But um, it's just, uh, it's unfortunate that we're seeing this now. And, you know, one of my concerns is, you know, with our staff is when a patient vacates a room, you know, they just kind of grab all the linens up out of that, take it to the dirty linen. You now, end up sticking yourself. Now they're going to wind up sticking themselves. So now we don't know, one, <coughs> what was in that needle they stuck themselves with. Or is it a used needle? Is it a used needle? And, you know, what other diseases maybe does that person have? So it really creates a hazard for our staff. So we've had to change our whole process, how we change linens on the bed now. You know, you basically pick up by a corner, shake it, make sure there's nothing in it that you need to be worried about. So, and it's hard to change habits. They're not used to doing that. But we've got to get proactive to make it safer for our staff, patients, and visitors. So that's going to start. We assigned a task force this morning to kind of start putting resources together. What can we bring into our organization for education for our staff and try to get that done as quick as we can just to make it safer for them and for everybody else that comes into the building. We finally, after I got through all that, got down to the financials for, you know, for the month. Uh, we had about $11.9 million was our gross revenue. Uh, we wrote off 7.2, so we're staying right in at about 62, 63%. Whatever we bill, we write off 63% of it. So it gave us an operating revenue of 5.5 million. Um, we had operating expenses of 5.3 million, so we had a profit for the month of about 132, 133,000, which is good to close the year out, you know, in a in a positive manner. Uh, looking, for, you know, as we move into next year, what can we do to kind of build that bottom line? I, I, we'd like to have that up. Six seven hundred thousand. You about a two to three percent margin is what we'd like to have because we take that money and re reinvest back into the facility. So we're looking for that for next year. Hopefully, have a two to three percent bottom line. And the board, uh, you know, you, you hate to scare them with some of this stuff, but you know, the, especially when we're talking about the drug issue he's having, you know, they were very inquisitive because they're reading it in the newspaper like everybody else. And you know, so you know, what are we doing to to help the staff? So that's why we put this task force together to really address how can we handle it in our building to make it safer for everybody. Do you have security at Woodlawn? Yes, we do. Uh, in the evenings, uh, usually afternoon from 3 to three to 11, 4 to midnight, we actually contract with both off-duty city officers and off-duty county officers. Okay. Um, you know, when I was asking, do we want to put security in here? I said yes, and, and I guess I'm kind of partial to the local law enforcement. You know, let's give them that opportunity. It kind of supplements their income a little bit. Plus, they know everybody's coming to that building. So if there is a person who maybe would as a problem that they've dealt with elsewhere, they already know that person, and it's not going to catch them by surprise. And it's been very well received by staff, visitors, and most of our patients. We've had a few folks come in. It's not happy that they're there, but there's a reason why they're not happy that those folks are in there. But it's just been working great having them in the building. And, you know, the staff has asked me, can we have them there all the time? You know, I, I would love to do that. I'm just not sure we have enough manpower, if, you know, from the local law enforcement that we could do. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. That, you know, would cut them a little thin. And, and uh, you know, they have to have decompression time, too, because they're usually doing this on their days off. That, you know, this is an extra shift for them. But they need uh, some home time also. So we can't, I don't think we have enough bodies to cover 365. You know, but we're, we're monitoring it, seeing what's happening, and, and do we need to tweak the hours. Right now, we've seen a, a fairly dramatic decrease in incidents in our ER in the evenings and in the uh, afternoons because of the presence of the, the security in the building. So it's worked out very well. Excellent. Again, speaking with Woodlawn Hospital CEO, John Alley. John, do we have anything else we need to cover? That's pretty well it. Uh, be careful out there on the roads today. Hopefully yeah. we'll start seeing some warm weather later this afternoon and they'll uh, not be quite as slick as they are right now. Well, that would be a nice thing to have happen. Yes. <laughs> 